Tuesday. March, you sorry, April 16th. Stan Ehrlich, market analysis. And we have with the stock market indexes, new lows again. Some support areas have given way. We should be, it looks like it's apparently on its way down, like I was talking about weeks ago, to the significant support area, which is in the area price range wise of the trading range from around the middle of December to the middle of January. This is where I think this decline, relatively short term, one to two months from now, correction in a longer term bull market is going to end. So I am mildly bearish for the next few weeks. But today, for the first time for several weeks, actually, probably a lot longer than that. Yeah, actually, for the first time since October 27th, we are oversold. It gives you an idea of how much we've dropped here recently in the last two or three weeks. Now it's oversold. And we do get oversold periodically in a bear move, in a bear market, and on short-term downside technical corrections in a bull market, which is what we're having, I think. No major top, medium to small size, rolling over type of activity during the last few, several weeks, now oversold. So a bounce should be in order, maybe starting before the end of the week. There's even a chance of it starting today, although I doubt it. And it won't go very far, it won't last very long. And I think it's gonna turn around and make new lows again, possibly or probably as early as the beginning of next week, if we see the bounce start pretty soon today, tomorrow, you know, Friday. Next chart is the E-mini also 30 minute, giving you a perspective uh, every 30 minute vertical bar or candlestick, doesn't matter. The way this market has acted, and it was back here on uh, March 20, approximately through uh, March 1st, April 1st, that it actually a little tiny double top over a week finished rallying zigzag down new low no new high new low no new high new low no new high new low today but now it's getting oversold so i'm watching for a bounce on the bounce i might be interested in shorting it I don't think the bounce is reliable enough to try to pick off a new long unless I get a specific ER buy signal, which I'm doubting. We're just coming down on the SPY into the first decent support area and not quite yet super close to getting oversold. So almost there. Next, the 10 minute spider. Same story, obviously, just giving you a different perspective here. So two different support lines have been broken, and we're back up against the second lower line. Now, I'm really looking for 477. I've been saying that for quite a while, all the way down to maybe 465, 466. But if I get to 477, that's it. Uh, I'll be looking for major support to turn the market back up and the beginning of another major multi-month bull move, which should make new highs for the whole damn trend. And in most cases, new historical highs. Next chart, Q's. First support area gave way yesterday. The high today is right smack at the now a resistance level. When you break below support, it becomes resistance and vice versa. If you move above resistance, then it becomes on the way down support. They just flip-flop. So what was support yesterday, which didn't hold, is now resistance today. And it stopped right at that level. We have a minor new low. Momentarily, we're up a little bit. Wouldn't be surprised to see the market close eh, 
modestly lower today. I'm not looking for a big down day or a big up day. Either one's going to be okay after yesterday's wow. New lows for a month in some cases. Next. And it's just the 10 minute QQQ. So you're getting a little more accurate, exacting picture. So looking for this big support area at 412 uh, and lower, 413 and lower to be reached. And somewhere in here, probably turn around and start the next bull move. NASDAQ futures. Well, pretty obviously, I'm going to say the same thing. The numbers just change. But it is this trading range in here. And I probably should change this support level. And I'm going to make the interior, I think, viewable to a much greater extent. Yeah, let's go with a 40. Good. So in the yellow zone, that's it. And I'm looking for it to bottom out. That starts around the middle of December, December 20th more exactly, and basically lasts until January 18, when it started to trend again. This was really a downside correction uh, in the overall bull trend. And the same thing, there's another support area for the same support area for the same reasons a little earlier. And you can just simply stair step your way up and down with this kind of activity. Next, NASDAQ, short term 15 minute slam dunk yesterday just couldn't hold, showed very little evidence of it bouncing at, at the support areas that I thought might show some bounce, but didn't. Anyway, I'm looking for a significantly lower. Next, we've got the tenure, uh, the YM, and that's the Dow futures, new lows, minor rally at the moment. Fantastic, incredible sell signal at the top of the market. The highest high in the DIA, which is the Dow, which is the YM. They're all basically the same. But I got a signal in the futures contract at the very, very top of the move. Next. Um, bonds. New lows again. Oversold for four days. Not holding at support at all currently well below support and we're at yesterday's lows after breaking below it so my next level down is around uh 112.14 this is really weird i have not seen in my 53 years in the business the low on that day is exactly the same as the low on the next day and the next day it was only about a tick higher then you had a rally one day that low is exactly the same as two other lows in the last three, three or four previous days, and a bounce. That is the fourth time the exact same low tick occurred within seven days. That is unheard of. So obviously, I've got to use this as a support level because we're approaching it and in oversold condition. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Notes. Kind of the same story, but in this case, I think there's a decent chance we could end up with a very broad double bottom. The bottom we've got with a bullish engulfing buy signal. This is all automatic. I don't have to do a darn thing. I just sit back and watch a trade on October 23 of 23. So I'm starting to get interested in a rally in these interest rate futures for a change because of the oversold conditions and support being close by. Next, crude. Overbought, minor double top. Tried to break out of it yesterday, getting into new lows, below the low between the two highs of the double top. That should have been a breakout to the downside, and we should have stayed below those uh, previous lows. It didn't. It came back pretty darn well. And today we're just fiddling around going sideways, maybe a little bit lower at the moment. I still embarrassed because of the double top and the overbought conditions. So I'm looking for lower levels. First stop on the way down, 82.73, 82.73. And we'll see what happens when that's reached. Next, we've got somewhat the opposite on natural gas. Very close to oversold. 
Therefore, you should be looking for getting out of shorts and or going long if we get a signal, if we get oversold, and we're close to that. So I'm a little bit bearish for the moment, a little more bearish, I should say. And the trend is your friend. This has obviously been heading south. Next, heating oil, kind of neutral. Cell signal, cell signal a few days ago didn't work exactly right, but it, you know, started to slide afterwards. So I can't say that was a good signal. It wasn't. It led to a very small loss. Otherwise, we did catch the top of the market uh, back on February 13th. I'm looking for the test of the support level here at 2.58 down to about 2.54. Next, this is the gold market on a 15 minute basis. As you can see, it's making new highs for this session and coming very close to the highest high. I'll switch back to daily real quick and spread this out. Oops, it has to recalculate the strategy. Sorry about that, take a few seconds. And then I'm gonna spread it out. I hope it behaves just exactly this way in a few seconds, but gold should be topping out in overbought conditions and it's not showing signs of doing so and here we are so i am a little off balance here i was looking for and i've just changed the uh, code i'm sorry and going back to gold breaking below this little line i drew that should be the trigger that we have a top in place and we're going to see significantly lower levels after that. But yesterday it came down to the line, stopped cold turkey at that little support line and is now rallying. I can't help it. I continue to have to say this market should be topping out, but also be patient, wait for the signal, wait for the indications that it's rolled over, and then maybe do something about it. Silver, same kind of story, very short-term chart here at the moment, 15 minute. Going to go to the daily, but I'm going to have to wait a few moments for the calculations to occur. But the spike on silver is very substantial, and we're overbought substantially, and I'm looking for exactly the same kind of a downside swing. I'll wait maybe five more seconds here for this to finish calculating. And if you look at the line of text in the upper left, it says the word calculating at the very end of it. It's small, and it just finished very good and pull it apart get some detail here zooming in so to speak and the same thing looking for support uh to give way and close below that little line i drew next platinum today it made a little bit lower low than yesterday and it's a minor new low for the last few days and it's staying rather soft so <clears throat> I'm kind of expecting the same thing to happen in silver and gold very soon, but platinum's, platinum's starting to do it already. Fine. Uh, it's put its toe in a support area already <clears throat> and bouncing off of it very mildly. So I'm not trusting this rally. We're still probably going to drop off more. I can't rule out <clears throat> a move down to around 900. Next copper well how about that this large head and shoulder bottom that we had in copper i'm sorry um has worked past tense yesterday's high was the minimum upside objective being fulfilled pattern is now history not a problem with it um almost a textbook example plus the fact that there was a small head and shoulder bottom, which was by itself the last shoulder of the bigger 11 month pattern. The small one took about mm, two and a half months, two months, something like that. Its shoulder was on January 18. The shoulder of the big pattern is the head of the small one on February 9th. And then the last shoulder on the small one was on March 1st. And zoom, it not only broke its little neckline for the little pattern and started to move up, but it also broke, of course, the neckline on the big pattern 
and went right through the resistance area and went straight to its minimum upside objective on this small pattern and topped out for a moment, came back to support. That's your typical correction toward the neckline on the big pattern. And up you went and we yesterday got to the minimum objective on the big pattern. Wow. This is a fairly rare example of a head and shoulder inside of a head and shoulder. I'm not joking. It's weird, but they happen. Probably seen maybe 50 of these things in 50 years. So not very many at all. Pattern's over. Done. Worked. Great. And it was a double. Now what? Resistance. We're coming down. We're now trading at the moment below the resistance, which was right in the middle of our upside objective. So I think we're going to come back at least to close the gap here at 4.1375. And that may not hold. I'm looking for another test of support at 4.02 or 3. Yeah, 4.02 would be about right. Next chart, soybeans, oil, meal, corn, wheat. And I got to say it again. We have caught the bottom in four out of five of those commodities I just mentioned. Beans is the only one that we didn't catch a signal at the bottom. It was oversold, did rally to resistance and threw it a bit more than I expected. And now we're basically heading down to probably new lows for the trend. I've got a line drawn and uh, when it hits new lows, there's a chance, of course, of a double bottom. It is oversold, so we have to watch for that possibility, but basically bearish with possible bottom formation developing. But let's see it start first. Next, soybean oil. We caught the bottom of the market in oil, meal, corn, and wheat. Here's the first one. This is not the exact bottom, but it's good enough. And it was on April, March 1st, sorry. And now we're back down to that same level after a very nice rally. So it worked great. So what are we going to do here in support and oversold? Well, that is a prime situation for a rally to start. And if that's true and it does start, you're going to start to see something that might look like a double bottom formation. So we'll watch for that. I've been trying to justify bullish uh, opinions and grains for the last month or two, and they just don't work out. I might have caught a rally of some sort, which I basically did because of my signals. They didn't go very far. They didn't last very long. And that's kind of what I was thinking was likely. Eh, that's all I can say. New lows expected. Sorry, maybe a bottom, but not yet. Meal, we caught the exact lowest low by a tick, meaning that February 29th low was a tick lower than two days earlier. Nice rally, moved up very nicely. Possible bottom formation looked like it was breaking out yesterday and or the day before. And now I'm going to erase the upside objective and the lines associated with it. And this is not a head and shoulder bottom, which I thought it might have been. We are trading way below the neckline, a no-no, likely to close below the neckline, a major no-no, and that pretty much kills the pattern. So bye-bye neckline and objectives and measurements. Now what? Big sideways, bear trend, major support, not oversold yet. So I think we're going to slip to the next oversold level, which is the huge major long-term support, and see what happens there. Next, wheat, sorry, corn, corn. We caught the exact V bottom with a bullish engulfing ER buy signal, the green. All you got to do is look for green and red. And we're going sideways for the last few weeks. I do think it's going to do the same thing the other grains are likely to do, and that's go down more and or break the lows. And uh, finally, the wheat, we got two signals at the bottom, back to back, day by day, right next to each other. And the second lowest was the bottom of the wheat market to the exact day. Now, the rally wasn't that big a deal, but that's what I've been saying about grains all along. I can't justify any significant bull market. Grains look like they're going to continue to just basically chew away at lows and continue with their bear trends on the average. Okay, cattle. 
nice rally today, high and last almost, and coming out nicely of an oversold, previous oversold condition, and that explains the rally. We didn't have a bullish engulfing at the bottom, unfortunately, therefore no buy signal. We did here, just at the very early part of the rally, we caught a sell signal on the exact whopping big high of the move on September 19th of 23, which led to a huge break from 189 all the way down in a few months down to 160, 161. Big break. Uh, some other great signals, another bear signal there and there, and that's okay, not the best. Kind of hard pressed to see some buy. That was a buy signal right there that did not work very well. Now, it did go up for a couple of days, so there was plenty of profit potential, but the profit was small, very small. Um, that's a different story. Okay, mildly friendly. Maybe we're going to get back to about 180. Wouldn't be surprised. About $5 higher. We got fairly oversold for a while, so that's my next idea. 180, give or take a dollar or something. But hogs. Now, we may have some data problems here, so I'm mentioning this bearish engulfing ER sell signal on Friday with a lot of reservation until in a few hours I get this resolved. Uh, is my data good? Tomorrow I'm going to tell you whether we had a signal or not. But if we did, then if the data is good, and I've tried to verify it with other sources, and I can't quite do it in time for the recording here. But, wow. Hogs apparently went limit down, lock limit down periodically before the close. We saw just barely an outside down day. And because supposedly Thursday's rally was very small, the ER1 short sale scalp and position trade got short at a very high level relative to yesterday's range, which would have been around 105.40. And a huge day trade profit and a really, really good start on the ER1 overnight, which I'm not showing you, but I have the little green dots there for the uh, uh, day trade scalp. Again, this is past tense. You can't repeat it, so I can talk about it. If the data changes and that does not produce a bearish engulfing on Friday, then what I've just said is is irrelevant because the data was misleading. Next. And I'm now going to go to back to the E-mini just to keep it in sight here to see what happens by the time we're finished, which is a few minutes from now. We're going to be looking at the New York ice exchange futures, the RBOB, unleaded gas. Higher today, possible new high close, getting close to making new highs for the whole trend. We did get overbought a couple of days ago. We had a very minor correction yesterday. Is it topping out? Maybe. Can't tell yet. We have two new highs since overbought back here on March 19th with a very high RSI level. But the other two RSI overbought conditions were at lower levels on the RSI scale on both the next one and the next one while at the same time, the prices were higher and then higher. It has to do with the number of days it takes to go up and the amount it takes to go up, sort of like saying something about momentum, but that's why the RSI didn't make a higher high along with price. It's called a divergence. Sometimes people look at that to try to discover topping out activity, and I basically agree. There's a possible top building, but I don't see it yet. Next. OJ, I keep raising the top of this pennant line from what I think was originally down here to then up to here and then to here. Now, it's still maybe a pennant, but you're not supposed to have to move those lines around. The bottom has been the same ever since, obviously, this low right here, March 21. But the market refuses to break out, stay broken out, and rally up even more after it breaks the bear trend line. It just won't quit. But there's no follow through. I don't have any higher highs, except for a short period of time. It's going right back into the middle of the trading range, the middle of the pennant. Um, I can't, I got to wait. This is just a, a waiting game. Next, coffee. 
<clears throat> well, I got to guess, of course, not being a fundamentalist is something wrong with a crop or whatever that happened with orange juice. Uh, it may still be in, in happening. Um, so coffee and cocoa, I think are grown maybe in somewhat similar geographic areas to having something to do maybe with the problem causing cocoa and coffee to go skyrocketing, but it's overbought and terribly overbought. This is the most overbought. I have to give you an educated guess that coffee has been within years, 96 almost. What is the high today on the RSI? It is a 95.59, huge, very, very rare to see it in the 90s to begin with. And that usually tops out the market. So this means to me, when it turns down, it's going to be big, sharp, and very quick. And a very large break. But it's not st starting yet. Next, cocoa. Now, the pattern I've been talking about is a broadening top. They're rare. And I'm doing something new here for you today. I've filled in maybe the next three days of activity in advance in a general idea sense. The top we're running away from on the downside very quickly. Today's low and last is under yesterday, the day before, the day before, and about the day before that as well. Four previous days worth of price range have gone bye-bye, and we're now below it. That sends, tells me that the top of this broadening pattern may stay that way, and that's it. Yesterday was the top. In the next few days, I will not be surprised to see it continue to drop off to the bottom of the broadening pattern. There, here's the important part. If I'm right so far, and we do get down to the bottom of the broadening top, it's supposed to crash through the bottom of the broadening top and just slide down like crazy. I got to guess maybe down to 76, 20, 65, somewhere right in there because of this, these little lows here. Then come back up maybe about halfway into the pattern and then collapse. Now, when we get to the bottom of the pattern, there's another thing that could happen. It could stop right here and rally halfway into the pattern, and then crash through the bottom. Next, sugar. Oversold like crazy, very low, 10.31. At the moment, it actually got down to a low today, RSI-wise, of 10.31, almost under 10. Again, very likely to produce or about to produce a bullish turn back up again. We... Today, we have broken below uh, major lows that we saw before. I'm going to cotton, same story. And here's our Bob again. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Stan Ehrlich, bye-bye.